We'll call the meeting to order at 6 o'clock. First on the agenda, are there any changes or additions, Dan? Yes, please. I have uh, two additions, uh, both under old business. Uh, one is an update, or update excuse me, on day one ambulance. And then the uh, update from the North Town Center Association. I also have a deletion. That's the number one item under uh, new business. And approve the signed resolution to adopt employee benefits. We're going to get rid of that, number one? Yes, sir. Okay. Next, approve the minutes. The minutes of May 20th, 2019. Make a motion of approval. Second. I have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? Yes. Under uh, new business, uh, number five, it has, looks like, remnants of the previous meetings and it's in there. Yeah, because Shannon wasn't here for the meeting. For this meeting. Yeah. So that whole section was actually from the previous meeting. Oh, yeah. Did you see that, Erica? Because um. we addressed it under Old business, yep. number two, and then yep. it went it landed again in number five. Oh, okay. Yep, I see. That whole section should yep. be deleted. Okay. Okay. Any further discussion? All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? So pass. Next, community concerns. Any we community concerns tonight? <coughs> Go ahead, ma'am. Okay, can you introduce yourself? My name is Lisa Berenay. Um, After the construction, the water has been diverted down the side of my driveway and it's actually eaten away. The concrete is like the whole drop side of the driveway is collapsed on itself. I called, I talked to Dan. Um, he told me to get over it and that was that. Where's your address? Where's your property? 128 Maple Street. Okay. So it's on the right hand side, it's on the right -hand past side. Todd's? Yep, two houses past Todd's. Um, I went out in one of the last storms, took pictures of um, the drainage spot that's in between Todd's house and my house, and there was no water there, but there was literally a river coming down my driveway. So the water is not being diverted properly from where that, comp where the, the paving was done, and it's just eating, it's just eroding everything. It's water that's coming off the road? Yes. Do you have any photos with you? Did you I take do. them? Yeah. Would you like me? To yeah. That's on the dry day. Okay. You can swipe that way. Swipe to the right? Yeah. Oh, I see. And it's created like this little lake down at the bottom of my driveway that's equally as. Oh, right here, yeah. Okay. That. Is there a drain catch basin there somewhere? No, probably up in that area. Hmm. It's right on the, if you're looking at the front of my house, the driveway's on the left. The you know what this looks drain is on the right. Yeah. Back that way. <clears throat> yeah, it looks like it just naturally goes downhill right there. I never did that before the road was redone, though. Man. Never had a problem with it. I mean, I've lived there 13, 14 years now. It's only since the road was redone that it's been doing that. And I tried to get someone to come in and do some gravel in there in the fall, but the weather did not cooperate. And I didn't get in there before the snow, and then it just snowballed right behind the house. Right. The road was uh, lower before. Yes. So that's creating this. Actually, no, it was higher before. Was it higher? That's it, was, it was a lot higher. Because we took it down. Took out eight, concrete. Took out um, probably 11 inches of asphalt, 6 inches of concrete. So the road was actually higher before. Hmm. What was your driveway paved now? Was it paved? Yes. Um, I'm not sure whatever the town paved. They, they took off the first 20 feet or so of the driveway, so they hmm. replaced that. Okay. Yeah. It had, and it had been paved before? Yes. 
I'm going to have to drive down by because I can't think about the house. Yeah. The houses well, are close together. Where Todd Thomas lives, just a little further near uh, yeah. um, Fitzgerald's. The one with the big wraparound porch. Big farmer's porch, yeah. Yep. Okay. Take a look at it, but maybe we can have Roland take a look at it. Oh, well, actually, maybe at some point in time you can go out and take a look at it too. Yeah. Um, That's the way about maybe. Uh, Let's see what time we get out tonight. Mm -hmm. I'll go over what happened the meeting tonight. Okay. If we still get some daylight. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. Sorry about that. Nice. We'll try to find a solution for you. Thank you. Do we have any more community concerns? Yeah, can you give me your name one more time, please? Baron Yang. I'm sorry, yes, Baron Yang, Lisa. Thank you. And the street address is? 128. 128. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Uh, liquor control, Sarah. Yep. Do I hear a motion? Okay. So moved. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? <coughs> we are now in liquor control. So there's a request to cater an event. It's a wedding reception on Bliss Hill Road on August 17th for 100 to 150 people. Monkey Hospitality LLC is the caterer. I sent it to him and he didn't have any issues with it. Richard. Monkey Hospitality on August 17, 2019, which is more than 3 p.m. Second. I have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion is passed. Is that, is that it, Sarah? Yep. Make a motion to come out. Second. I have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? So passed. Old business. So we'll do uh, the update on A1. Bill, how are you? I'm fine, thank you. How are you? Good. Hi, Corey. Hi. Um, so um, just a follow-up uh, to the last meeting where we talked about the uh, the conditions with uh, ambulance number one. Uh, just to recap, it's got the, the uh, rust issues uh, that involve uh, the chassis and the patient care box. Uh, we did get a second estimate from uh, Lemoore Valley Ford. Uh, they actually want to remove the box, sandblast the box, sandblast the chassis, uh, and then try to put it all back together. Uh, their bid's $53,000 for that repair. Ouch. Uh, so uh, I'm happy to send that up if you get one more okay. Um And we've got uh, been looking at some, uh, some used ambulances. Uh, uh, one is available somewhere here in the northeast through a, uh, uh, through a clearing house. Uh, that one's 30,000. Uh, there's one down in the Rutland area that is 38,000, which is a 2013 four wheel drive. Uh, that's been uh, completely refurbished. I've got the pictures and details on that one. <coughs> and uh, uh, Yankee Fire Equipment in Massachusetts con reached, uh, contacted us and reached out. They've got a, uh, a van front ambulance that is not four wheel drive. Uh, for twenty nine thousand, and I've got pictures of uh, I've got pictures of all those trucks. If you're interested in seeing those, um, other than that, uh, uh, nothing new. I just wanted to give you that update that we're continuing to work the problem, and uh, mm -hmm. you know, we'll try to come up with a, a fiscally responsible solution here. Yeah. Um, Do you have any further update about the possibility of using one of Hardwick's? You uh, no, about but uh, my plan was. Uh, we have district meeting this Wednesday. Mm -hmm. Was to uh, discuss it with the hard work rep at that meeting. That'd be nice. Okay. So, yeah. Yeah, that's, uh, uh, I had a just off the cuff kind of conversation with Scott Brinkman about that at the you know, one of the EMS you know, weeks things. They only have two trucks, and they uh, uh, they have enough staffing for both trucks. So I, I don't think that would work on their end. Yeah. What was, the, what was the price on the used four wheel drive? Uh, the one that's in Rutland, there's there's one that's thirty thousand. That's a twenty. Uh, uh, that's a twenty ten, 
Uh, the other one in Rutland is, is uh, $38,000. i have also talked to the guy in Rutland about whether he would uh, would uh, be able to do a month-to-month -month lease on that truck for us. That would be uh, helpful. And he has, uh, he, he said, you know what, I've never even considered it. Let me figure out what that would look like. Mm -hmm. So uh, when I hear back from Micah, I'll, uh, I'll let you know. Yeah, it sounds to me like the, uh, the second estimate on A1 <laughs> really puts it out of the realm of something we want to do yeah you know yeah so. i was like wow okay i took it to different places nobody even wants to touch it right <laughs> they're like yeah we don't even know where to send you yeah to get it done you know for a fair estimate the first one the eight thousand dollar one was just to patch it right and how long will we get you know yeah two years max irony of ironies lamoy valley ford actually contacted robert Gleason, <laughs> who sold us a two and asked to buy a box from him to put on this truck. Right. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's not going to happen. We're not going to remount a remount. No. No. Well, Is it feasible for us to, to ask, ask you to go down to Rowan and take a look at the 4x4 that they have, the $30,000 one? Uh, I don't want I would, if we come back to another meeting with this on the agenda, I don't want to go with just photographs. I'd like to go take a look at yeah. and, and eyeball it. I don't want to buy it to get If that turns out to be an option for us, right. I'd like to have him to have the eyes on, make sure our structure's going to work in it. Uh, I can give you a little history on that truck. That is a uh, that is a truck that was uh, from Regional Ambulance in Rutland. Mm -hmm. uh, the gentleman who has it is Micah Haven. He's a Rutland City firefighter who has his own body shop. He purchased yeah, the sure. truck from Regional uh, and then took it down to bare metal and refurbed it. Okay. Uh, so uh, cosmetically, it's good to go. It does have high mileage, but um, he, uh, uh, for for what we're looking for, it, uh, it it may be it may be a viable option. Yeah. What else are we looking at to get it functional as far as equipped? All the equipment. Now, that the want. truck. We would just transfer the equipment out of the current truck. Uh, obviously, <clears throat> obviously, that truck would need to be lettered, and he, he's capable of doing that. Right. Yeah. That to me sounds like a better option. Uh, yeah, and that uh, that vehicle is immediately available to us whenever uh, if if we decide to pursue. What, what is your and feeling? I guess I also reached out to him about whether he would do a long-term place. What is your feeling on it? Uh, of the of the three of the three vehicles that we've got information on, that would be my preference. Uh, one because I'm intimately familiar, having worked at Regional, I'm familiar with their maintenance program. I'm familiar with the quality of the vehicles. Uh, familiar with the layout of the vehicles. It's comparable to what we've got now. Um, but uh, again, uh, I'll take direction from you and we'll do that. Yeah, I agree with Eric. If you need to have somebody look at it, I think we need a skilled eye. One of my, one of my thoughts is the other concern I have Bill, with, with uh, this process because we're coming right on top of the delivery of A2. Yes, sir. Is that we have two ambulances um, so close together. Uh, in age, and now with a used vehicle, that gives us a little bit of a buffer at a not huge cost, depending on the quality of the vehicle. Which I would, I would uh, defer to your your knowledge to, to tell us if it's good or not. But uh, if it gives us a couple more years, not just a year, right? I agree. That would certainly even sweeten the pot as far as the representing the taxpayer's dollars here, making them stretch. So right. Right. I don't want to, like, 35000 is, is a hell of a Band-Aid, uh, so if I think the Band-Aid stretch to cover more wounds. Right, I concur. That, uh, yeah, I would not be looking at this truck just to get us until uh, the next, the, uh, next budget. Yeah, a few months to get yeah. a new truck. I would look for this truck to give us some strategic awesome. ability to plan uh, rather than uh, right. kind of ad hoc our way to yeah. a new truck. Good. We're, all, we're thinking the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. We talked about the goal was to get something that would bridge the gap until this load would take off. And then that way you could get on the site. Yeah, yeah. if That's that would work. Mm -hmm. Well, I think we're this, this would be the second year of payments. Yeah, so we're going into the second year. We're going into the We've already year. paid for the first year. Yeah, so, so realistically. So you that. feel with the, uh, the mileage that it currently has and the condition, it, this would bridge that? Or? Given 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 the given the maintenance program that I'm aware of with that truck, yeah, yeah. Excuse me, excuse me. Right. Well, we don't put on a lot of miles, but right. 
And again, this is a truck that's primarily in a backup role. Uh, it's there for that second call and uh, for special event coverage when we have larger events in town. All right, so we'll set up a time to take a look at that. Um, I can contact Mike in the morning and uh, see if maybe he can even, even bring it up here. I'll, 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 work, I'll call him in the morning. That's great. Thanks for your help on that, Bill. Yeah. No worries. That's cool. Thank you. Next, the cemetery update. Dennis, is that you, Jane? Hi, Hi it's Jane. <laughs> Hi, Jane. <laughs> How are you folks doing? Good, good. So I just wanted to bring forward the dollar amounts that we have got estimates for and yeah. where we're at with, with what we're doing. So mm -hmm. the first issue is just the money, money that we have in different, in different places. Mm -hmm. um, before we come back to that, uh, underneath is the proposal that we got from Barrett's Free Service. Um, he went around and looked at all, all the cemeteries with me and came up with what he felt needed to come down and get trimmed and I came up with a price of 17250 So because of all the problems and that we do have money in the pot to do that, we decided let's just do it, do it and get it done because we'll have the crane here and we won't have to worry about it for a few years. So. We can give him the go ahead. He's going to contact Dan if he hasn't already. Um, and last week when I signed the proposal, they said they were about three weeks out. So he'll be contacting so that the town can do the traffic control mm -hmm. and take me out in the middle of it. So we right. have permission from those places. Um, and then we have uh, Vermont Monument Company went around each of the cemeteries and looked at it for what stones he felt needed actual repair and ones that needed straightening and, and so forth. So he did a proposal on each one of those mm -hmm. with pictures. Um, came up with a repair and straightening for like $80 million. He also, I just asked him about cleaning because he just spent on our minds and I had no idea even a ballpark of what it would cost to clean the stone. So right. He did that as well, worked that down for cemetery, and um, so that came to $29,000. And those are cleaning the old marble stones, which are basically anything that's over 25 years old. I figured that's the rest of us do. If they're younger than that, then they should be taking care of them themselves. Um, basically, those are the stones that the rest of us who use power washers don't get to touch because we'll disintegrate them. Right. Um, so that's just something he said that we can, you know, approve a, a payment or do it over time, do it over, you know, five years and, and do a little bit at a time or not. But that's just something to think about whether whether we want to do that or not. That's so, pretty reasonable, looks like. Well, right? it's kind of in my head that's probably what it would cost that I have no idea. So, yeah, that's less than I thought it would cost. Huh? So um, Dennis is going to speak with um, John Clegg because he wants it, an opportunity at the best time to call for a little bit. So mm -hmm. we'll see whether he does or not. That gives us something to go by and just to start thinking about. So um, kind of why I'm here tonight is just to go through what funds we have mm -hmm. because the way, um, the way we've been paid over the last two years, we started getting our check for a fiscal year and not the calendar year. So the fiscal year, we end up having two monthly payments from our old thing from last year, ready to pay for May and June, which we haven't had to do because we haven't had anything mowed yet, and now it's going to go through the time of books. Right. So we have $4,000 that's kind of left in, in our kitty, so to speak, that would have been for mowing this year. Mm -hmm. So I broke it down. Um, the available funding that we have almost twenty seven thousand and by doing the trees and doing the, the straightening and the repairs that leaves a balance of forty seven sixteen thirty five in our pot. Mm -hmm. So we consider four thousand of that carry forward. Yeah for the morning. So my question to you is do you want us to pay the town back for that? Do you want us to just keep it in the kitty towards repairs that are going to come up? Potentially next year, 
when you I'm going to be transparent that that's what it mm -hmm. was for. Maybe move it towards the line for this year. Or, you know, come back next year and want it back for another reason. Right. But we've, the, the we've got enough. Funded, so I don't see a reason for it to come back. Or now it's already in the budget anyway, so I don't see a reason for it to come back to the mm -hmm. town. So you just keep it in there. That's what I think. What are you going to say? I don't see any reason to pull it out of there. Chris? I think so. I did also notice, like, looking at some of the cemeteries, there's some fences that are need some work, you know, fence posts and yeah. things like that. You know, I know it's a lot, not a lot, but it adds up if you start really taking a survey of what, what they need. Yeah. I've been in a couple of cemeteries recently, and... You know, it's nice to have that stuff fixed, especially mm -hmm. the stones, but even the, you know, the thread of trees and the fences that are in poor shape. I have um, Agway, um, Menard's Agway is supposed to go drive by here pretty soon, and just, like Wheeler, you know, we've, we've painted and stained that a couple of times in the last seven years, and nothing, nothing will stick to it. So there's right. no fixing right. it, it's just getting worse. Well, there's some broken but, posts up there, too. Yeah, we're going to fix that, but... He's going to give us a price on what a vinyl, just the front section. Right. Just with, it, looks exactly. it looks a lot better. Um, so it lasts a lot longer. Yep. And we have a little, we have money um, set aside to get a new gate, and we're going to try to find a, a gate or a, or a rod iron gate, have it made, and get it reasonable enough so maybe we could do it at the rest of them having a match. Yeah, and that'd be nice. That's goal. But that was mm -hmm. that's. That sounds good. In the works. So we don't need to do any action tonight. You talked about Clegg's maybe getting another bid. Yeah, so we'll just take the other ones together if we can do it first. And right. I just wanted to let you know what the, the total price is. Yeah. That we are doing and the things, you know, like if we need to just something to think about. Oh, well, we certainly are. Right. I certainly appreciate you getting all the work together. It's a lot to do to, to figure it all out. But it, it's definitely nice to have a, a long-range capital plan to see what we've got coming, you know. Hopefully the trees that are coming down, pretty big ones. Yeah. We won't have to deal with that for a while. Mm -hmm. so. Any comments? No, I appreciate the work that they do because it's not something people are jumping out of the stands to help. Mm -hmm. What do you think, Dennis? Any comment? Well, my only comment is we, the reason we started coming, uh, I'm getting old. And I don't believe it. <laughs> um, I need physical help is what I need. Uh, I've got a couple of projects going uh, down at Randolph where I'm the trustee uh, and down at uh, Kittys Falls down at Lakeview. Yeah. Uh, we've had some problems down there with trees, trees yeah. that haven't been picked up yet. Um, I really wish we had somebody that we could go to for not only advice, but for some some physical some help. Yeah. Uh, that was why we started talking. About you know, I, I did you speak know? to Apex about that, and he's willing to do more more stuff like that. He's even got some equipment, you know. Right. Morrisville Rotary is always looking for these kinds of projects, also. Yeah. You know, where they have a pretty good set of volunteers. You know, and it won't be tree work that you're speaking of, right. but if it's going through and doing cleanup work, that physical. kind of thing. Uh, I would suggest you uh, contact them. That's, these are the kinds of projects yeah. that they're looking for, community service projects, just yeah. as another resource here. Right. Who's the in contact? Rich Jacobs. Right yeah, here. that's a good idea. And for with equipment and stuff like that. Or even Sharon maybe. Menard. Yeah. Jane, you know her pretty well. Okay. Yeah, contact Sharon. Good the other thing too, might be the community high schools seem to go up to community service, don't they? Yeah, they're getting ready to graduate. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think it will be the National Honor Society, but there was talk about changing it back and making it, and I don't know where it stands. Yeah. Right. <clears throat> they're done for the year, though. That, yeah. that is good for, for some projects, but I don't know how many of them are ready to run a chainsaw and right. 
chippers and stuff like that. That's what I'm thinking, the equipment side Boy of it. Scouts, Eagle Scouts. Yeah, United Way, Jim Kern. Yeah. They've got a good group of uh, volunteers. They do a lot of chainsaw work around. That's good. United Way? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so if, if Apex is willing to do, I mean, because really the only tree work that wasn't included here was, was Lakeview because it didn't require a lot of big equipment, so we kind of left that one alone. Mm -hmm. So yeah. we asked him if he, if he wanted to sure. work on that. Yeah, uh, yeah I've that spoken to him, and he said he'd just let me know. Okay. You know, he's got skid steer and other equipment and mm -hmm. mini excavator. Who is that? He's the Scott. Scott Droney. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. The one thing I was supposed to ask, um, um, Jeff, the Mount Monuments, he was wondering if he needed water, if there was a source of water that he could fill his up to 300 gallons. That's the biggest that he would have, but if he needed to do his repair work. We have, we have a, our tanker that big. I mean, that's 1,800 gallons. So, I don't know if they have anything else down there. there. But, but but he's got his own tank. He's yeah. got his own tank. He just, he just, just, he just needs to fill it. Yeah, well, I'm sorry. Yeah, I think that's not what I would rush. Yeah. Well, that's all I'm going to just have him talk to you if he needs to Yeah, all of these ones. Because we have, you know, that's, we have enough water down there to do that. Well, we're not getting into it unless you're trying to tinker with something out of the village system. But the highway garage is good because we do fill up stuff down there like that. So. The only the only request I have you guys is you got to sign up to do the next twenty years of this. Yeah. <laughs> we really appreciate what you're doing. If you can promise me twenty, I'll sign. <laughs> <laughs> thanks, thanks, thanks a lot. My uh, that would only put me to ninety. My mother's ninety-seven. She's still. You should be able to do it, Dennis. Yeah, you should be able to do it. <laughs> thanks Thank a you, lot. gentlemen. Thank you. Okay, next, uh, update on the Oxbow bathrooms. I don't even want to come to the table. Okay, can I just stay? You can here? stay. If, if you can traject your voice, no problem. <laughs> I know you can. I probably could. So you'll see some plans before you. And these are plans with the bathrooms split. One bathroom, two bathrooms. We went round and round with the architect and engineer. And we started working with the plumber about code. Okay. He came back and said, you cannot have one bathroom gender neutral. You must have separate bathrooms with separate sinks, fully enclosed. With this, a lockable door. With a lockable yeah. door. So this was our original plans that we came back to. I had the plumber look at him. He talked to the code person for the state. Uh, this is Eddie Fredericks, and then I talked to Mike Churchill at Lawrence Energy yeah. and said, because I didn't know Eddie Fredericks, so, okay, so I went back to Mike Churchill because I had been working with him and said, is this correct in what he's telling me? I mean, I have to have hot water in here, things that, I, I don't know where there was gaps in this, but there were some gaps that failed whether the architect or someone should have guided me a little bit more on this whole project. We are back to the table with our original plans. Two bathrooms, fully lockable uh, sinks, maybe quiet both of them. They must have a mop bucket, mop receptacle, right? Correct? We have to have hot water heater in these. You must have a temperature of at least 110 degrees to meet state code. And so I'm back to the table and asking your thoughts on this plan. I got one big question. Where did they fit all that stuff in a porta potty? Right. You know, Brian, Port it's portable it's is a key word. Sense. Here we're upgrading. Right. It's not passing, but we can use them down there. Yeah, if you're going to build something permanent, it has to have that. Yeah. I do know that both uh, Eddie Fredericks and Mike are very knowledgeable with, with what has to be so done. So I was talking to Mike Churchill, and I walked in, and Eddie Fredericks was waiting at the bottom of my stairs, or pretty close to it, not even. And I was like, I didn't even know who he was. And he's like, so you didn't. Yeah. Yeah. There's not many people around that know more than Eddie and, and Mike do. And they are willing to do this work for free. That's great. We volunteers. 
That's great. So my issue remains is a safety issue. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I do not love having a lockable door like that. We have no choice by state code. You brought the code book to me. It's not even an option. They have to be floor ceiling, has to have a locked door, and the sink has to be inside. Hmm. Well, if there if there's a separate stall that's lockable, that's not acceptable. Has to be floor to ceiling. Floor to ceiling. And your sink has to be inside there. Hmm. Lockable. Must be lockable. Yeah. Sounds like it is what it is. Like I said, Eddie Fredericks said this to us, and I called Mike Churchill because I didn't know Eddie Fredericks, and I wanted a second opinion right. on it. And Eddie knows. He did. Pull his code book right out. Oh, he does. He it does. right there on my desk, and I was like, okay. He does everything by the book. He does most yeah. of Concept 2 stuff, and he knows what he's doing. Mm -hmm. yeah. Any thoughts on the board? Is it Chris? I'm very much against it. Sorry, that's I just I think it's a it's a it's inviting a dangerous situation in my opinion. So that's not going to labor. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what does the rest of the board feel like? Let's get it done. I mean, code right. is code, yeah. and if right. we're going to put them in. Well, it's, I, so what I'm struggling with is that we, uh, I wish some of this research would have been done in advance because we have a budget we're working on. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm guessing there are ways around this, but now we're working within a budget. So I think that's where some of my challenges and frustrations come in. Um, I, I really, I, I understand code, but I think there's ways we're, we're looking at code kind of now instead of prior. Um, Do you want to speak on that behalf, Dan? Yeah. I, because I, that's, that's we went why, round round. Yeah, okay. That's the reason why we went to an architect and have the design done. Um, yep. You know, so that we wouldn't have to second guess code. We, I mean, they're, they're, they, they did everything here pro bono for us. But that's the reason why we went to an architect so that when we get that, because we didn't want to have this code. We tried to get that process because that to me is what an architect is supposed to do for you is to design something that's within code and it wasn't until we had the plumber really look at it because he was going to do everything for free and then we went back to the architect and the architect said oh yeah the plumber's correct so i understand your frustration too because we share that frustration that's the reason why we started with an architect so that we wouldn't have those things um, so until we had a plumber really look at it and go, wow, we can't do this, we were assuming that the architect was doing something that was within code. I mean, this went through an architect, an engineer, it just, uh, I mean, Dan can tell you, I, I didn't even want to come back before you. You know, I, I, you know how long it's been flying around my desk? And I'm sure you all know too. I mean, you know how long we've been talking about this. Yeah. And I just felt like, so all of a sudden we're going back to the drawing board again. What do you guys feel? Is there anything we can do within code, like indicators that it's, you know, when you lock a door on most bathrooms, an occupied sign comes up, so that if law enforcement's on patrol at night, they drive down by there, they see this very visible occupied, which would be suspicious in and of itself. I mean, I don't even know if we're locking it at night. I don't think we are. We, we are, are locking it at night. It's, it's, yeah. it's on timers. It'll, it'll okay. lock. Actually, you can control it via the internet. You'll be able to lock it and, and program it so that. Like, you know, Eric, honestly, we said daylight hours only. Mm -hmm. 8 o'clock at night, that door locks and doesn't yeah. open until 7 in the morning or something. Yeah. I mean, I, Which I think is a great idea. Out, but it, they definitely, it was one of the very first things. And even the security firm that came in and looked at the security for down there, that was his, like, you need to have lockable bathrooms that, that are automatic locks. Most parks have that. Mm -hmm. 
why I don't understand the issue. I, I get your issue, but most parks, you know, I refer to Gardner Park in Newport, they have huge bathrooms with one locked door with stalls inside, but that door is locked, you know, at night. Is it male, female? Yes, there's one of each. But and multiple, it locks at night and then multiple stalls and within one thing. Within one. Yes. yes, that's my point. Right. That's exactly my point. So once you're inside, you can it. Once you're inside the male side or the female side, right. and you can hear what's going on. My issue is you're in you're in the cement box <laughs> of you know I don't know. It's just maybe it's a, not a concern, but I. Uh, I think it is. <clears throat> what do you guys want to do? Wait to vote on it? We do Judy's back? I, I, I understand. I, 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 I understand, Chris. I honest to God understand. I, I'm, we are again at a, at, a, at a place where we are at the mercy of state engineers and designers who set the code and aren't thinking along the lines that, that where you're at. If, uh, so, I understand that, but I might again. I can't. I'm not. I don't want to relitigate the past totally. Mm -hmm. But I think had we had some of this education up front around this, that the project plan and the budget could have been developed around this, so that we could we're going into it with more information, more education, and having. You know, and so we but having a bigger budget is not going to help us really. So, Unless we do something. I think if you were looking at multiple stalls within one, your codes are going to look different. I don't, I don't know. I mean, just, we're talking about one example already that we know of that looks different. So anyway, it is, I guess it is what it is at this point. But I, I do have concerns. Mm -hmm. Right. I think part of it, Chris, was from the get-go, I was under the assumption we just wanted two bathrooms. Maybe I was under the wrong assumption. No, it just made sense I, to put some bathrooms down there instead of I, uh, paying for the portalettes and dealing with the mess and all that stuff. I think the idea of bathrooms are great. Yeah. I think it makes the park more usable. But and we have lines down there. We have only the well, we are yes. putting in security. Yeah. 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 And it's only open during daylight hours. So, I mean, there's are It's closed in the winter, locked, we've, yeah. drained. We've eliminated as much of the negative odds as we possibly can. I'll say one last comment. <laughs> I know this is not, I, I'm like the devil's advocate with this. I still don't understand who we're going to be shipping in cleaning supplies every single time. We're putting, we're putting in a uh, closet. There, there will be a closet there. We're okay, it's so not. It's, it's not, not on the job. We try to get. Yeah. It's not on the job. Yeah, yeah we, have, we try to get the job. We are definitely putting in a closet, and we're putting in a um, uh, mom receptacle. <clears throat> okay, where are we at? What do you guys want to do? Build it. I make a motion that we go ahead with this design, the original design, what we want to call it. I have a motion. Do I have a second. second? And a second. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Nay. Motion is passed. I'm sorry, Chris. No, I, I get it. <laughs> I knew where I stood. I get it. <laughs> it's a I'm good with that. I'm good. Thank you all. <laughs> Thank you, Trish. Trish. Thank you for working on it. I know yeah. it's been a lot of work. Yeah, I know you do. <laughs> okay. okay. Number two, review and approve conflict of interest policy. Has everybody looked at that? Yeah, this is the policy that you know presented to the board last time. You know, to yes. Yes. Yeah. 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 I have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion is passed. <clears throat> Next, number two, approve and sign resolutions to amend section 125 plan. Do you want to 
Um, yeah, it's um, 125 plan is a cafeteria plan that allows us to do pre-tax um, deductions for our employees' um, premiums for their insurance. And it is recommended that that plan be looked at every five years and, and potentially updated. The last time we did it was in 1996. And that was when it was established. It's never been updated since then or, or really, you know, and there have been a couple of changes. Like we did used to have vision insurance and now we do. And um, the terms of when somebody is eligible for insurance have changed over the years. So um, I contacted Vermont League of Cities and Towns and said, you know, who can help me with this? And they gave me their agent, which was Hickok and Boardman, who used a place called Core, Core Documents. And they, that's exactly what they do, is they go in and they will type up your new Section 125 plan or whatever you want. There's a whole bunch of different things. And uh, I have them do that, and Dan and I both looked at it to make sure that it, it was in line with what we're doing now. And, um, and it, seemed to, it seemed to work pretty good, so we thought we would bring it before you to see if you would approve it. I mean, I was going to get, I, the whole document is pretty lengthy, that's why I didn't copy it. It's really a premium only plan document because that's all we use it for. It's just the IRS code to be able to have, to be able to do pre-tax deductions. Do you see any problem with it? <clears throat> I, well, whatever problems we saw, we addressed at the that time. Um, you know, one of the things that we did have them do is we put in language for volunteers mm -hmm. because that's not a, a normal you know, run-of-the-mill thing that they do, and so we, we did that, um, made sure that it was in line with our personnel policies, and yeah. that... The document is what, about 80 pages thick, so we... Oh, yeah, it's, it's thick. I mean, you could, you, you know, absolutely can go through it if you want to. <clears throat> um, no, I don't need to. Guys? Um, So I'm seeing a memo here with four different Right. Motions. The third one you don't you want to straight that one out. That one we don't need anymore. Um, I was advised by court documents that we needed to have that um, ERISA plan, but we do not need to because we're a municipality and I double checked that with the LCT. So you don't need the third one. Um, the one that we're talking about is the number two mm -hmm. right now. Yeah. Which is this one, right? Yes. Yeah. Do I hear a motion? I make a motion to amend, uh, to approve and sign the resolution to amend the IRC section 1.5 premium only plan. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? So, were there the only changes? This was simply a review and update, right? Yes. And absolutely. the changes will be added in what we have added as time went on, just to the official. Right, to make it in line with what our practices are. And should we have um, Bob sign it? So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we'll allow Bob to sign it on behalf of the board. Yeah. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion is passed. Next one, <clears throat> discuss and approve change in paid holidays. This is something that actually came out with the, the contract and the, the fee negotiations where they wanted to change their paid holidays. Um, it's currently town meeting day to Christmas Eve, and uh, we kicked it around to all the departments here. It makes a lot of sense for us to switch to holidays because we work on town meeting day, typically. Um, we were all here, it didn't make sense that to do that, plus if we're required to work, then we're paying at least time and a half. So um, our recommendation is to, to change that paid holiday from town meeting day to Christmas Eve, which typically speaking, we only work a half a day anyway at all. So um, that's our recommendation, to just make more sense. Okay. Do I hear a motion? I make a motion to amend the personnel policy section 22 holiday leave to delete town meeting day and add Christmas Eve day. Second. I have a second. Is there any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion is passed. Thanks, Tina. Oh, awesome. Number four, Allison Link, opioids. I'm Jessica Bickford. I'm standing in for Allison Link. I didn't see Allison. That's oh, a, welcome. Thank you. 
Um, so thank you for having us to be share updates on various substances. Um, we're with Healthy Lamoille Valley, and we're a substance use prevention organization, specifically working to reduce youth substance use. Passing around a data packet on um, opioids um, and prescription drug um, use numbers in our region. Um, as you're getting it, um, you'll notice the top page is actually um, most of the substances that are used. And I want to make note that these are last 30-day use numbers. Mm -hmm. Depending on the substance, it may not necessarily indicate that there's a problem with that substance. So, um, so we know that alcohol is a legal substance, and that has our highest use numbers um, in the region. And then marijuana is our next highest use. Um, when we look at, yep, yeah, there's a few extras if anybody would like them. Um, when you look at the bottom, um, we have um, prescription drugs um, that are used outside of how they were prescribed. Um, currently, those numbers are at 5% and then have dipped down recently to 4%. And then at the very end, we, we, they've started to recently uh, get information about heroin. And those, are, those numbers are fluctuating in the, the one to two one the one and a half two range so mm -hmm. just just gives you the overall picture if you go to the next um, sheet there um, we can see that um, people ages 12 and up in Vermont have uh, very similar pre prevalence rates to the United States averages so we're you know and right now we're we had dipped down to about three percent and we're at four percent um, the scale is a scale of zero to ten so while it looks like we're kind of in that middle range it's really, um, those numbers are really low uh, in our region and in our state. So um, the next slide is actually where it starts to get really concerning. I mean, any misuse is concerning, but um, 18 to 25 year olds are the population that we're seeing the largest number of, um, or largest percentage of misuse, uh, non-medical use of pain relievers. Um, so that's, um, been at 13 percent and now it's down to about eight percent so those numbers are going down but that's double um, what we see in our 12 to 17 year old population and four times what we're seeing in the 26 and older population so that's really where a lot of our focus is around um, opiate prevention is really in that 18 to 25 age group so um, so to switch to the next slide, um, this is the, from the um, Vermont Youth Risk Behavior Survey, and this is Lamoille County information. Um, and this is grades 9 through 12. We're currently at 6%, and the state's at 5 So this is definitely too much as well. Um, we know that this population, a lot of them um, may even be getting it from a, a family member you know, who may have a similar diagnosis. Um, and so we're doing a lot of education around that as well of, you know, don't take a prescription unless it's specifically prescribed to you, even if the symptoms are the same as somebody who has been prescribed to. Um, and then just for a point of reference, we see that alcohol use last 30 days for high schoolers is at 35% um, for Lamoille County and 33 for the state. Um, when we look at binge drinking, it's at um, 18 and 17 um, percent, and uh, marijuana high school use is at 26 percent for the Royal County and 24 percent for the, the state of Vermont. So, what does that all mean? That's a lot of numbers in really quick, um, quick you know um, succession there. Uh, we know that um, Vermont use is similar um, for. Um, prescription drugs um, to the rest of the country. Um, we know that it's decreasing. Um, we know that alcohol and marijuana are currently higher um, in Vermont than the rest of the country. Um, Interesting to have the facts like on Chittenden County or Washington County, mm -hmm. you know? Um, those are everywhere. actually available. Um, so this is, um, this information is all available on the <coughs> Vermont Department of Health website on the website and yeah. so you can actually break it out by county yeah um, I'd like to see that yeah so um, I can send you those links um, so you can mm. see that um, so we know that young people who use substances before the age of 15 are 40 percent more likely to develop dependency um, to substances in their lifetime 
as compared to 6% um, chance among those who wait until the brain is done developing at uh, age 21. Um, Vermont has implemented all the best practices to tackle the opiate issues, including prevention, intervention, treatment, and recovery options, which are helping to turn the tide, as I mentioned earlier. Um, Vermont is doing better than most of the country in opiate misuse, treatment, harm, reduction, and data collection. We're starting to see small signs of hope. Um, this document here is for future reading. It's public health strategies to reduce opiate use disorders. Um, and it's from, again from the Vermont Department of Health. And those are the, the, the bigger strategies that the state has been undertaking uh, to reduce um, opioid misuse. Um, what are we doing locally? Um, it's, um, we know that effective prevention addresses the risks and protective factors um, in our community that increase or decrease substance use. Um, while the substances of misuse may vary in our communities, the risk and protective factors that lead to substance misuse of any substance are the same. Uh, when we address these common risk factors, we're addressing all substance misuse. Um, in addition, it's important to address prevention in a comprehensive manner in multiple levels. So individuals, relationships, organizations, community, and policy and systems. So this one here um, has more detail. Um, it looks at, um, on the, the left, it looks at the risk factors to address, and then uh, for the prescription drug, and then on the right column is possible interventions. Um, I found through and bolded the ones that, as Healthy Lamoille Valley, we're working on. So when we look at availability and access socially, you know, we do a lot of education um, in the community around proper drug storage or, and disposal, um, the risk of sharing those medicines, uh, we do social media campaigns and that sort of thing. Um, then we look at retail availability access, um, early onset, so providing parents information about how to prevent, how to store their medicines, um, perception of harm, again, not sharing, um, and then also opportunities like this to share um, accurate data. Um, so we have a couple of resources that we've developed specifically around this. Uh, this is the HOPE card. Um, it's for those who may be struggling with opiate use disorder. Um, and it has taken out the provider lingo and really um, just where do you go to get help? You know, it has the MAP team, which is the medical assisted treatment at Cheslov, uh, the, uh, the recovery center, Michelle Salvador as the Department of Health um, prevention consultant, as well as emergency resources. Um, so we have those. And then we also have a prescription drug card that we developed um, in consultation with uh, Katie Marvin. And it's just, you know, know the questions to ask when you're getting a prescription. So creating informed consumers. And on the back of that are three of the current four prescription drug uh, year-round take-back sites. Um, you have one, actually you have two in Morrisville, uh, the Morristown Police Department, as well as Copley Hospital. Um, these are the last few, and then they'll be reprinting with the, the new locations, and Stowe, Stowe Police Department is also working on becoming a year-round site. So, so those are there. If you look at the backside um, of this white sheet, uh, there's a lot of things that you, as a select board and community, can do um, to help with the, the opiate um, situation. Um, just simple things sometimes like putting, you know, prescription drug safety or the take back locations in, you know, your communications or an electric bill. Um, putting a banner up for prescription drug take back the biannual days. Um, the, the Department of Health has free prescription drug mail back envelopes. You know, having those, if that's something you would like to have out in your lobby or in your town buildings. Uh, the possibility of dedicating a page in your town report. Uh, to you know, information or prevention or resources, um, continue to work on policies, and then just opportunities like this to create conversations. So, and I know time was short, so I probably yeah. talked too fast. Well, it's a nice. Uh, it'd be nice to have some of these cards available here in the town offices. I think you do, but you're welcome to keep these staffs. As well. Okay, that's good. Yeah. Oh, and finally, um, on June 25th. 
at Green Mountain Technology and Career Center. We're hosting with the Lamoille County Sheriff's Department the fourth annual opiate uh, summit. Mm -hmm. So, um, so that that whole evening will be much more in depth than our you know five to ten minutes here. So. Yeah. Well, thank you for the presentation. So June twenty fifth at GM uh, TCC, and that's six to seven thirty. So. I know a lot of people in the community have questions. I had questions, you know, and uh, it's good to know if there's a source we can go to to get the answers. Yes. And, you know, good education for everybody out there. That's good. And Thank I will you. send you the links so you can get the other. Yeah, I'd like, to, I'd like to have the comparison for county by county. Yeah, it's really Great. interesting and yeah. helpful to see where we, where we line up. Right. So the only, uh, this is uh, timely, and the one comment I would like to make is that. Um, there's lots of, there's various prevention and heavy treatment right. piece. Um, from my perspective, that uh, the more we can do to create alternatives and right. stuff for kids to do is extraordinarily important. So this is on the heels of a conversation last meeting around our skate park. Yeah. Uh, I've seen comment, you know, there's an article in the paper and comments around, uh, you know, maybe some folks not being so excited about having funding go towards that. But I think anything that we can do to create uh, opportunities for our youth uh, is, is very helpful and directly related mm -hmm. to uh, substance use disorder. So I think the more that we can promote and educate that, we have a parks or you know, rec department now, so uh, I think it's, it fits in really nicely. And um, I'm starting to see some you know, there's always funding for uh, treatment. Right. Getting the funding for prevention is a little more challenging. Um, we are in the process of putting together a drug free communities proposal that will hopefully provide up to 10 years funding. Um, so yeah. um, that's due July 8th, and that's occupied by a, a big chunk of time right now putting that together. But you're right. Um, also supporting those protective factors for our kids is, is the flip side. You know, we can do a lot of, you know, education, but it's, what are the kids actually doing? Um, are they in a safe space? Are they staying busy? Are they having that positive level of risk? Um, all of those things are really important factors for our kids. So I think thanks to Ian uh, equals MC squared, you know, providing space. Yeah. yeah, that's great. Any questions? No, I just continue to thank you and Allison for bringing this information to us. It, it's incredibly informative. You do pack a tremendous amount of stuff in a very short period of time, but it kept me exactly okay. focused, so that was good. Uh, and I really appreciate our board being willing to take the time to do this because our broader audience and our media that are here uh, take that, that message out so the more we can get the word out, the better. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yes, thank you. <clears throat> All right, next, award billing scholarship. I would like to make a motion that we award $500 to Olivia Anderson. Do I have a second? Second. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion is passed. Next, review of upcoming zoning changes. Todd. So I brought a little cheat sheet in to make this really easy for everyone. So this is the zoning warning. I highlighted kind of the bigger ticket items. I know there are a couple items that some board members are uh, interested in personally. I emailed a couple of you guys last week about those. Um, mm -hmm. pick one from the outside. So this is the zoning one. This is one of your hearing uh, for your meeting in two weeks from now on the 17th. And I believe you're set up to vote on this the 19th. So of the one is a lot of stuff in here that's uh, mundane. The things highlighted in yellow pill are more impactful. Overall, I want to say the uh, council is uh, has a younger and newer membership, and it's a very vigorous board, and I think they did some of their best work in the last year. So this is a good zoning change. So one thing to show you, um, any of you guys want full bylaws now, or do you want to wait till next week? Do you want the full thing? Yeah. <laughs> Maybe study. Study. 
So right now, if you look at that, there are, I think, 62 pages. This is where we came from. This is 2011, shortly after I got here. There's is 176 pages. You don't feel the difference on that. And that's when you had other people not working for the town running your job. I think this is uh, more reflective of what a border town is now using. I think you're probably right. I think the initial version. Yeah. <laughs> right. I remember that. I read it all at one point. Yep. And it was painful. Yeah, so we've, uh, we've cut it down by more than two thirds. Uh, it's still a little work to do. We only cut so much, obviously. But uh, I'm very happy where there's only bio, very, ha very happy with the zoning bylaw is. And there's a lot of work done. I mean, I don't think we're missing anything we were with 120 pages 10 years ago. We really aren't. So, mm -hmm. with that being said, uh, in this zoning change, a couple of big ticket items are the first things 2045 uh, A and B. I included these in, your, in the packet underneath the warning. This is uh, your use table and your dimensional table. We used to have each zone, we used to have, so here's the commercial zone, here's the industrial zone, here's residential one, residential two. They just repeat each other. Now we're putting it in one place for one stop shopping. I know I've already got these tapes right behind my monitor at my desk for glancing over and looking and calling like dealing with a realtor or a lawyer or answering a question in email on the phone. It's very helpful. So that is a uh, one of the larger kind of formatting changes. There are some changes in there as well. Um, we can go over those at the hearing. Are any questions on it? Who jumps out at you? But that's the, those are some of the bigger ones. Uh, in section, go down to P. Increase accessory apartment size. Um, the state requires towns to have accessory apartments to permit them on lots that otherwise couldn't have two units. Uh, we've done the state minimum all along, which is thirty percent. We're bumping up to 40%. Um, accessory apartments are a great way to add density. We need housing in the community. And accessory apartments are generally built inside existing buildings, and most people don't know they're there. So if you want to retain the existing character of neighborhood, an accessory apartment is a great way to do it because here at my street, I have one above my garage, and you never even know what's there. I don't think most people don't. So they're generally not built in outbuildings. So uh, we're hoping that's a way to add density to the community and affordable housing without changing the character of some of these neighborhoods. Um, the, the percentage change really gives people a way to, uh, some of the smaller, more modest homes, 30% of the space doesn't really make sense for a living space, apartment space, the 40% makes it a little more reasonable. Because you're, you're, you're not stuck with a 290 square foot apartment on a modest home. Um, under 482, uh, the planning council is concerned about far flung houses on, town, on class four roads. Um, stretching rescue, police, fire services. If you're 20 minutes up on Beaver Meadow and Road, if you're 20 minutes back to the village, especially, I mean, only a ones available, looking at tonight's discussion. You don't have a backup crew or backup ambulance, so they'd like to see uh, that development have a little more scrutiny and go to the DRB. So it's basically what's all it's saying is I can't issue permits for development of class four roads, and it should go to the DRB. I'll look at the road and look at the strain on services in terms of capacity. On the next page, um, I highlighted both section 700 and 800. Uh, for the first time since I've been here, we kind of went through the subdivision regs. A lot of the stuff in there that we're changing is pretty straightforward. For example, we're still regulating uh, wastewater and, and wells in our septic. The state took it over in 2007. Should have been there for a long time. We're finally fixing some of that stuff, and we're making it a much more concise package. Uh, some of the bigger ticket items in the back, the zone changes, and right back here, I'm going to skip behind you for a second. This is a draft of your new zoning map. So going through this real quickly. Uh, this first one, right now, this is the old map. This is traffic supply right here. This is Route 15. This is Brooklyn Street. This is Center Road. Right now, the commercial zone goes all the way up to Fraser Road. That makes no sense. I can't see anyone putting a store on Fraser Road. It's a dirt road. So this cuts this section of uh, the thing right here off and basically just does a certain distance from Route 15 and instead can, turns this back half of it into residential zone property. We're not, with the advent of e-commerce, you're not seeing more box stores or anything else coming to town. We need housing, we don't need the commercial realty. Our commercial realty really is gonna be added for some time thanks to e-commerce. So this is kind of where you see the condos up at that CCS builds, and this is gonna allow them a little more density there. <coughs> what so about so those, the village lots up there? The village lots are still here in industrial three. And it's actually, I'm splitting Jim Bradley's lot right there yeah. and some of the lots beneath it. 
with residential that gives Mr. Bradley a, I know he's got a subdivision in the, in the hopper. He does. He has a choice on that one for the DRB if, uh, if he wants to do residential or commercial. So, uh, any questions, unless there's questions on that, I'm going to keep going. Uh, Fisher Marshall. Fisher Marshall over here is this big business enterprise zone. For 15 years, we've been talking about where the, this is where the town's going to grow to. It's not going to happen. It's really never going to happen. Don't uh, say never. We'll see. Uh, they don't want to sell anything. And they want the school, they like the fields. And the fields, and I think the planning council values those fields too as open space, recreational amenity, tournaments coming to town. So, what this does is this takes what was business enterprise and switches it to more residential zone, mixed office residential. So, they can still do If someone wants to, if Union Bank wants to build an office building and have mortgages approved out of there, they can still do that. But this takes away the ability to store it. And I don't think we're going to see stores there. And I don't think the property owner and Planning doesn't really want to see stores there at this point. So no more, the Union Bank could put a mortgage office, a back office, but they couldn't put a branch there with the zoning change. That makes sense. Um, next on this one, also we're switching the zoning designation for the Green Mountain Arena Peninsula to Industrial 4. It's currently business enterprise, business enterprise is going away. Um, it's really, it's more changing mostly name only. Um, what? Yes. I mean, you mentioned the old skating rink. Yes. Right? So we've had that in front of us the last couple of years. Correct. For, will this allow them to use change the use of that or to use that for? Yes. This will, I mean, right now that's being used as a pick and pack facility. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I know uh, MSI would like to expand in that area. Mm -hmm. This will make that a little easier for them. Um, okay. The business enterprise zone they're in now is more like Union Bank puts a, puts a, a branch there. It's uh, business services, it's hair salons, that kind of thing. It's not direct retail, it's that secondary retail, the service part. And that's really not what they want to do there. And that, what the zoning is pushing them towards. And this matches what they want to do there much better. Okay, I like to think the politics are gone from that parcel at this point. That's water under the bridge. Uh, last couple things. We are expanding where multifamily homes could go. There's an expansion. Here, so high density residential zone on this map, as you can see, is only this is Lower Main Street right here. It's this chunk of real estate from Lower Main, like the Archers Building in Congress, back to the Potash Brook. That's it. That's our only section of where you can put, other than the downtown, new really multifamily housing. So that is going to, uh, that gets expanded. It wraps around the commercial zone more to make it more concentric. So it's wrapping around uh, the downtown zone, sorry, the central business zone, say like commercial, all the way up to Park Street. And it also wraps down old Route 100 here up to the commercial zone by Rock Garden. So there's a large expansion of the the residential zone with the zoning change as well. And lastly, right now, um, our Village Line, I know where it is. Some people in the room may know where it is, but most people don't know where the Village Line starts and the town begins. Um, our zoning is largely based on the Village and Town Line. And I'm, we're trying to massage it up where it makes sense. So if you're right here, if you look, the low density residential usually ends in the village line and rural residential, which is a two acre zoning, begins when you get into the town. Where we're adding in right here is from, uh, this is the Route 100 itself there, just south of the village. This is Meadow, no, sorry, this is uh, Meadow Drive. Uh, this is Oak Ridge. That's um, uh, Belanger Lane. So, what the intent of this is doing is to allow greater housing density in this area, which is close to the village. Uh, but just outside of it, obviously. The intent here is this splits the, uh, has this junkyard, and also brings in the, uh, the Bourne's fueling station, with the property across the street that they can three families on it. So it's meant to encourage a higher and better use of those properties, at least a lot of them, a higher and better use. If you can do, the junkyard I think is 22 acres, I have to look at it. Instead of doing 11 homes, they can now do dozens of homes there, which may encourage them to do something other than a junkyard at some point. That's the intent. We need housing, and that's a good place where we're talking to add some housing. What's, is there a minimum lot size? 25,000 square feet if it's on. So LDR, and if you're out in the town of White, it's 80,000 square feet with a zoning change. It's two builder's acres. Um, and with the new zoning, if you're relying on well and set, it's 25,000 square feet. If you have village services, it goes down further to uh, uh, 10,000 square feet. The, the 25,000, you're, cha you're changing from the larger to a small portion of the town. Correct. That's what's more, like, more like an acre. Correct. Half more acre. Half acre. A little more than half acre. It's half acre plus. Yeah. 25,000 square feet is plenty of land to get a well on the septic on. 
build no issue and replace an area. Depending on the soil. Yeah. Yeah. Depending yeah. on the soil. Yeah. If you're in a swamp, you're in a swamp. Right. You'll perk a lot these days, though, in those systems. So, yeah, so the, that area, that southern expansion of the low density residential zone, gives these property owners more housing they can do versus what they can do right now. Although I did get a notice today that they're doing a 2.1 megawatt uh, solar facility on the Hess's junk area, so some of that's maybe for not, we'll see. Hmm. Do we have any comment? And this isn't a formal hearing, but is there any comments from anybody in the audience or some of the planning, planning gentlemen that are here? And you get the chair there and the vice chair is here as well. Mm -hmm. uh, if you guys want to add something, I don't need to do all the talking. I think you did. It's fine. <laughs> Thanks, Tom. <laughs> Etienne or Tom? Uh, I, I haven't heard any commentary on the, uh, any official commentary on the, on the uh, question of changing the density of the central business, business section. Mm -hmm. Would the board like to comment on, on that proposal? I noticed it's going on. No, it's still in, it's still in there. Where is it? It's under 204.5. It's part of the um, the matrices. Yeah, you mentioned it. Yeah, so if you look at page seven, the last page of the line note, it, one of the things this does is right now it's um, if you look at multi minimum area multifamily per unit on the dimension table, so page yeah. looks like this, and halfway down. Right now, it's 50 units per acre, minimum area of multifamily per unit, and we're taking off the limit. Smart growth practices say you don't need a limit in the downtown. If you're parking, if you're, well, what you have for setbacks, your building height's gonna limit it. Um, we're trying to do that to make some more properties interesting to developers, whereas they're not now. This is where Dan mentioned the last meeting, because parking could be a concern. If, um, for example, to, you asked for comments, JV at the last meeting, would like to see the zoning change go through. He's got that lot on Hutchin Street, the lot sold, and there's going to be a the Royal Housing Partnership. Like LHP Housing Watch, same people as the Arthur Project. They're going to build a million dollar plus building there if the zoning goes through as proposed. If you guys take out that limitation, that project goes away. But when you vote on this, you should know that that building is going to need some spillover to the parking lot for overnight parking, and I think that building will eat up existing capacity. So if you're going to vote for this and you get a nice new building in the downtown, you get more people shopping, uh, using the services here, you're going to have to put money in the budget to restrike that parking lot out there. You can gain and get rid of the bathtub. Get rid of the bathtub, and you can gain. Get rid of the bathtub, and you restrike it in a smarter way. We have the parking on the outside. You can gain roughly a dozen spaces right off. You can yeah. easily. You, I think you can easily. <laughs> You can easily add back in what this project is taking up. But I mean, right. it is a limited supply. You can't park cars forever without spending money on it. Right now, we can do it cheaply with restriping, uh, but that option will go away in the future. And it is important at some point that we keep some capacity for it. If something ever happens to the nephew building. Yeah, I think we need to do that anyway, with restripe and get rid of that concrete. So if you vote for that, then you should, that, that's something you need to talk about in the budget for construction next year or the year after. Actually, I don't, I don't think that's entirely what we talked about because we did talk about that. Um, and you know, I think it goes back to the whole redesign of the parking area over there. That's right. Um, so we, we've looked at that pretty extensively. Um, and I think one of the things that we talked about, Todd, was that reality, the best way to do it, because it, there's multiple problems there. There's not just the bathtub and the entry, exit, entry so. exit. Plus, right now, there's um, on Pleasant Street, you have parallel parking, and there's actually a, a, a very big line of sight problem for people to exit from the parking line over to, to uh, River Arts. To, well, just coming out of the parking lot on the Pleasant Street, you can't see. Yeah. There's, there's really no line of sight. So, in the ideal world, and I think this is what, once again, this is what we talked about, is that we would bring those spaces that are out on Pleasant Street right now into the parking spot, and move the sidewalk towards the and, and parking yeah. and, and the lighting outside, and then there wouldn't be any parking at all on Pleasant Street. You would bring that parking inside. And you but we gain parking spaces out of it. You can much yeah, easier add parking spaces there. There's not the problem with ankle parking on the streets. Right. There's a lot more things that you can do. Then you can redirect the flow correctly around the parking lot and get a lot more parking out of it. I think timing-wise, as we talked about, realistically, if you put it into next year's town meeting to be able to do that, 
you're probably looking at two construction seasons because I think you know there's there's more engineering than we have the capability to do in house there. Make sure that it's laid out right. And yeah. storm water concerns that we come up with. So you would do your engineering. You don't have money available to July 1st. You get your engineering done during the summer, fall, fall time frame, and then you're ready to go to construction. What would realistically be 2021? 2021, I think, would be a more realistic view. And that's the reason why you know I have the concern on that. That you that project, the next project on the slate, is the one that will eat up all the parking, but then it's really going to be a while. There's a time frame there um, where there, the parking, overnight parking, especially in the winter, will be maxed out. So there's ways to fix it, but I think we also have to take the long range view of if this, do it correctly, let's bring it all in. Just restriping it, yeah, it may add some parking spaces, but it won't serve. Right town too well to, to fix the long-term problem. But in the interim, it would help, like yeah, getting rid of the planner. Rid of it, but once again, I think you, you may be actually disrupting some because you're going to be in there a summer doing it, and you would be better off doing it all along. Yeah, what Dan's right. saying is like the, so the cheap, easiest thing to do is just restrike it. You can get parking spaces to strike it. What Dan is saying you really need to do at some point, Pleasant Street's only a two-rod road, and if you look at Pleasant Street by Bose, it's really wide. Doesn't need to be that wide. So you push the sidewalk out. Yeah. You put that parking inside. You get a bunch of angled parking I facing see. Moco, facing Go right through there. It's yeah. really a no-brainer for not a ton of money. Especially so, with the the added use of Moco, there's so much more traffic in there yeah. now. And uh, is there any uh, benefit to looking at a design where there is an either an exit only or an entrance only onto Hutchins Street out of that parking lot? Such that on Hudson Street, I think one thing, if we push the, the curbing out to Pleasant Street, we bring those parking spots in, let's say it's annual parking. If you go to the end, if you back out of that and you're facing Hutchin Street, if you were to get to that end of the parking lot, we had an exit only ramp that took us on the Hutchin Street, mm -hmm. allowed them a different way out of that parking lot than coming over by the post office in that lane. I, I don't know, I'm just throwing that out there, right? You don't have to talk about that. I think that's the, the things that are beyond my skill level. Yeah, right. right. I think that's too close to the intersection, Eric. It really is. Yeah. Yeah. Plus, yeah. it's the intersection, plus there's yeah. a slope there. Um, <coughs> Go ahead, I think that's question the or a concern. I don't know if anybody else has brought up but Coming out of Pleasant Street onto to, uh, Elmore, it, it's just like, it's something's going to happen there. The it's parking. The parking, it's just it, yeah. two blind spots. and. I don't know if, if that could be worked into that. I agree. I think when the state paves and they restrike that, you're going to see those spots push back a bit. Yeah. Those sight lines will improve. Look yeah, the sight lines, lines here. Improve, yeah, so. sight lines are tough. I agree. Etienne. Uh, so per the question about the zoning change, thank you, Todd, for pointing that out. I thought it fell off the list. I'm still there. Uh, but the, the, there had been, there's a lot of like background commentary about parking as a problem in the village. and. From our perspective, I think that's actually a pretty good problem. I, I have to agree with that sentiment. We'd like to be able to help yes. long term. Yeah. You know, it's great to hear all these ideas. Is there a goal? Is there a is there a specific problem that we can list that needs to be corrected? A number of spaces that need to be added, whether it's overnight or day parking, whether it's town government parking or union bank or just people going to pick up pizza. Is there some way to make a list of goals that would help people to, you know, channel those ideas constructively? I think the idea was to maximize the parking. I don't think we have any data on how many spots we need, but we hear lots of feedback from businesses and, and even patrons that say there's not adequate parking. So so that that in itself is very helpful. It's daytime it's it's people yeah. coming through to pick things up to, to, to frequent businesses. Is it also people who are parked here all day because they work in the village? I think there's a lot of different categories there. There's there's the people that stop into the coffee shop or or Thompson's or the place across the road to get the quick morning coffee and the quick turnaround. And then there's the people that are looking for parking all day. You know the employees that work in the downtown. And then there's the people that are looking to go to dinner at night, you know. I walked around the village today and, and, and it wasn't that full. You know, I walked around 
And but there's those hot times in the morning. People stop and get their coffee or getting their muffin or breakfast or whatever. Then there's a you know morning afternoon where they might be after pizza, you know, or, or El Toro. And at night, you know, at night the other night I went to El Toro and couldn't find a parking place. You know, it was lined both sides of the road, and I was surprised. Of course, it was Saturday night, but you know, there's different challenges, different times we need, I think we need more parking in general, but I don't think we have a, a, an eye or a figure on how many spots we need, but we need different spots at different times, you know. So I think our idea is just to try to maximize it and look for ways to, to figure that out. But it's a good question. Well, I want to make sure that we have constructive discussions about it. So if, if the Planning Council wants to talk about it, any guidance you can provide, you know, very specific guidance for the overnight town government parking uh, businesses and then uh, the transients in time of day is always helpful. Mm -hmm. I, I think in the winter, especially in the winter months, yeah. the the more residents, once again, it's a great thing to have. We have more residents living in the downtown, um, but because of the maintenance requirements on moving the snow and plowing the snow, you know, the guys are coming in at midnight to do that on a regular basis, that's when they work. You know, it's not just loud. You know, you know, storm, any type of snowstorm typically takes us three days to clean up. So the overnight parking for the residents in the downtown, I think, is an issue. Because, you know, in, I know people, I know people call me that live there now, and if there's an event going on, they have to wait till the event is over and go to move to the overnight parking spots. And I think working with the village crew to figure out how they can still do that and maintain those things and plow and move the snow because because it just takes so you know sometimes I don't know how they do it without hitting cars now let's put it like that you know it's, it's large equipment they're loading and hauling snow off and then having the room to park and then the room to, to maintain and plow and remove snow at the same time I think is a challenge um, but and that's the, the one thing that I think strikes me with this. Putting more residents in, those residents are going to depend on the municipal parking lot for the winter overnight parking, and that's the concern I have. That's why here the spreadsheet's overnight parking. It's not looking at the whole lot, it's overnight lot. And this project that has only goes through, it's a nice million dollar building, but it is going to use up the parking lot. So if you guys are serious that you're going to put some money into the parking lot to expand the capacity there, that's great. You can pass the zoning as is, you get a new downtown building, you get more shoppers, more people living downtown. If you're really not going to put money into the parking lot, then that bylaw is an issue because that building will be an issue because it's going to max us out or we'll come real close to it. What if they build it? When do they think it would be completed? Uh, I can't imagine they'd complete it. They take at least a year. Yeah, say next construction season. Yeah. yeah. So maybe they're done next fall. So you might have people living there for so next maybe winter. a win a winter. Yeah. So. You, you would definitely be maxed out for a winter. Yeah, you definitely max out for a winter, I agree. Mm -hmm. So, that's your zoning update. Any questions on any of the stuff in there? No, thanks for your work. Thanks for your work, gentlemen. I'm just going to throw out a comment because it's been like my pet peeve for a while. Um, and actually, some language was added after the year before about marijuana dispensaries. And currently, in the current zoning, they're uh, like prohibited in our zoning. And I can see in 401.6 that they're working in uh, the suggestion that we delete that prohibition for marijuana dispensaries. And interesting on top of the conversation tonight about opioid use, and people may disagree with me, but I worked in law enforcement a long time. I talked to a lot of people coming out of rehab, and marijuana was definitely part of their initial entry. And I think when we see marijuana being sold in dispensaries, we are making it more readily accessible for our youth. That's my opinion. So my, my point is, you're going to hear me come back, and uh, when we do the vote on this thing, and I'm going to, I'm going to move to strike that 401.6 and leave the language in there prohibiting it. We already have the town of Johnson and Waterbury Center who have adult stores who are currently uh, selling products along that line. Uh, if those communities want to have marijuana dispensaries in their in their midst, fantastic. I think the quality of life issue. So just letting you all know that uh, I'll be coming back to I expected you would. Just leave it up. I might board split on it. I have a number of board members that would like to strike it. 
I have board members that don't want that want to keep it in there too. Um, what you do is, if, let's say if you like the, all the rest of the zoning, everything is great, but the marijuana part, mm -hmm. you move to the approve the zoning as proposed. Uh, well, but striking the deletion of the marijuana dispensary. Okay. Is that a significant change? Going to screw no. everything up? No, you can um, you can leave. So other zoning change, all this stuff's warned. You can take you can take what you want out of it and just approve that. So if you take ninety percent of it, you approve that. If you're adding things in that aren't more, then I have to rewarn another hearing. Right. So if if Eric wanted to say I want to add marijuana dispensaries to certain zones in town and not leave others, it's different when I've warned that to rewarn that. But you're you're free to approve what's warned or not approve what's warned. Just leave things on the cutting room floor, and without so you can vote on that the 19th. So you have the hearing the 17th. You're not triggering the 19th. You're going to vote on the 19th, and you can just leave stuff if you don't like. Nine out of ten things in here, leave nine out of ten, ten things on the cutting room floor and approve the rest. You can't add things without warning another the hearing. Yep. Everything has to, the public has to have a warning and a chance to see what's on here before you approve it. As long as it's warned, you can just not approve it or approve the stuff that's mostly other stuff. But just don't add stuff. And it's not that big a deal to add stuff. You want to add something, I have to basically push this out a month. There are people in town being happy about that because there are projects that are waiting on zoning change, um, including a nice new project on. Uh, Cross and uh, So hopefully we can just direct the planning council like last year. If you want to add something, tell them to go do it. I assume they'll go do it. Versus long the whole thing down. Well, I would agree with Eric on that issue, for sure. Talk to the board members. Your point. I just worked here. <laughs> Thank you, Todd. Could you? Thank sorry, I'm not going to let you. Yep. Let you go. Through. Yeah. Could you talk to me a little bit more about the uh, short-term rental? Sure, so um, versus what we did last year. Can I still want your bylaws? Like the Airbnb. Yeah, the Airbnb. So basically, it's, it's still the owner occupier requirement. So last year, Eric made the point that that stayed in the cutting room floor last year, um, but the owner occupied requirement for short term rentals. Uh, because we were tying the voting checklist, Eric made a good point that if someone's in Florida plus one day, six months on a day person, they really can't rent their home even though they are really a Vermont resident. They're here five, five months. And, 29 days a year, whatever it is. So this ties it to, this allows an owner to uh, use their primary Vermont residence. So the only way I'm looking at that, for example, if that passed as proposed, if you're Bob Jones and you got three Airbnbs in town, like, hey, you can only rent one of them, you rent your primary house, that's all, that's the only thing. The planning council spent, I don't know, six, six meetings last year and another meeting this year talking about how short-term rentals, how especially some of the apartments are being hollowed out, the people that live here year-round, who are someone who's basically running a mini hotel in different places in town. And it really hurts our housing supply, which we need, and it hurts affordability, because it obviously, uh, the supply is tight. So they think the Airbnbs are fine, but do bring revenue to town. They want it with some sort of caveat saying, limitation to keeping the money in town, too, because it's an owner's primary Vermont residence. So we had talked a little bit about, uh so I understand that. I'm just curious what the research looked like. I actually reached out to a couple of professors at UVM. Uh, I went through the economics department there. There's, they're unaware of any sort of economic impact studies that have been done to that effect. So um, I'm not done digging. Um, I can see, you can make an argument easy either way without solid data. I think it's pretty easy. Because you can also uh, say, like you said last year, I know people who are building houses just to Airbnb them, and that's new groundless growth. So well, and then there's also the, the, the other overall economic impact of bringing uh, app towers into the area. So I was curious if any work had been done. Haven't been able to find any yet. Um, either way, um, on to the the cost, it is true there across the country that people are restricting. Uh, restricting access uh, for short-term rentals. Part of it's quality of life, too. I, mean, I do get complaints, especially the larger ones. Yep. Like, if you live next to a house and your neighbor's next door, but they're gone on winter, you get a new like a new party of people don't know the property or parking over every weekend. Every weekend, you're dealing with the same issues from well-meaning people who are just parking one and don't mean to because they think they're trying to, they're trying to go to their Airbnb house for the week. So it's a quality of life thing, too, that we do get in the office as well as part of that. But if you don't like the owner-occupied part, just leave that well, so, I'm gonna, so this is going to allow someone who lives in Florida for five months and... Six months in a day, whatever. Six months. They can, well, they, they're they primary can. Vermont residents. That's a Vermont resident. It's just their, their, their place in Vermont. Basically, only right. allow one in town. I'm not they, have to, they have to live here six months in one day. No, no, no. They have to just 
It's a primary place in Vermont. It's their house. So basically, they only have one to one declare town. a homestead on their property. They don't, because you wouldn't declare a homestead if you're six months in so the bank. Yeah, so I'm trying to figure out how you would. I don't really know if you're doing multiple Airbnbs. Um, ending Airbnb, ending Airbnb is a business in town. You're basically doing it your own property. Yeah, I, I understand that. I'm just having a hard time understanding how that differentiates. That person's not going to be here either, either way. So some of those arguments still don't hold. Well, they're, more, they're, here, they're here more, so you're, if, it's, if it's their house, they're more accountable than neighbors. It's not like they own five in town and they're running as a business. They have one house and the neighbors know who they are, they know their cell phone number, or someone's shooting up fireworks, fireworks at one in the morning, or throwing bottles off the deck or something like that. And just, it makes them more, their neighbors are easier, the neighbors can easier reach out and touch them. That's kind of the thought behind it. It's kind of the whole thing with the home business thing in town. If you're gonna, you can have any kind of business you want in town, which is very liberal that we do that. However, you gotta live there. And if you live there, A, you're dealing with the same impacts as the business, and B, you're comfortable with neighbors. That's the whole thing. But again, if you don't like it, just leave it out, part of the cutting room floor. I like the DR, like the, the, yeah, the conditional sort of approach better. That was my advice. That still is there for uh, yeah. more than four bedrooms. So if you're doing four bedrooms or less, it's exact excess, it's, you're supposed to be your primary property. Five to eight, you can do the DRB, and more than eight's an in anyway, and the DRB does that regardless. So that's the one part in there about the short-term rentals. Yeah. And if you want to take out the owner-occupied thing, well, as you said, it's going to be hard for me to know. I'm not going to know, really, if someone's doing Airbnb in town, they have one at Sugarbush and then one at Killington, too. I'm just going to know if they have multiple people. Like you look at the map and you click on the little icons, you see the little face pop up. You, right. If your face has popped up in some places in town, if this patch you hear from me. That's really it. Yeah. I'm just going to keep people in town from doing duplicates. I'm not going to be searching Killington to see if they have one there, too. I find it pretty interesting that uh, I've talked to several people that operate Airbnbs and and most of their their uh, visitors, the people staying in their places are, are here for the beer tours, you know, and they're, I hate to call myself middle-aged, but m my age, and they want to go to Rock Art or Lost Nation or Hill Farmstead or whatever and do the beer tours. And they're, they're not partying and shooting bottle rockets off their deck or anything like that. They like to make microbrews and like to try different ones. And it's amazing, like like two thirds of the bookings are here for that. It's amazing. My original house in Vermont Bob is my place at Sugarbush. And I rent that Airbnb. If this bylaw passed in Warren, yeah. I'd be out of, I couldn't rent my place on Airbnb. So yeah. I do understand where you're coming from. Yeah. That's just my concern. There's a lack of reasonable accommodations yeah. um, oh. in the town. Yeah. This is that. All the Airbnbs have really I'm closed. To stay, we'll say. They closed all. I mean, all the all the traditional bed and breakfasts are gone. Pistol down, closed. Right. Maple Sin is closed. Blue Torn is all closed because it's so much easier with less regulation and less taxes in the state to online. rent part of your house and you do it online. And then they're all over town. There's 50 in town now yeah. versus the three ends. At the end. I don't think there's a lack of accommodation. Didn't you say, Todd, that there were something like 2,000 different properties being offered in this local area? On Airbnb. Well, Airbnb County, yeah. Stowe, yeah. There's, there's, there's a yeah. huge amount of accommodation. Stowe. It's massive. Yeah. It is. And I mean, we're, we're actually one of the higher towns in the state in terms of revenue on, on what would be rooms and meals tax. Because we actually do a lot of it here, which is surprise, which is mm -hmm. surprising to me. So my concern is around the restriction. There's there's no other so Airbnbs are a, a viable uh, place Enterprise. to to uh, to seek accommodations. Um, in Morristown in particular that's one of the more reasonable places to to look for places to stay. Uh, we do have a, a motel here, but and you have the many moves too, and the Hill Road cabins, which are awesome. Right, but that's it. You got to do Airbnb home away. Uh, yeah, one of those two. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's it. So if you didn't like the residency requirement, really, I'm striking three words out of that out of that definition, and it goes forward as that. Okay. Any other comments? Thanks, Todd. No problem. Have a go. Thanks, guys. I'll put this one back in the office. Yeah. Feet. Yeah. I've got a copy of that, too. It's a paperweight. <laughs> they need to patch a wall. <laughs> OK, next, discuss the sale of excess equipment. Can we have some equipment that um, came to us by way of Vermont peanut butter? Yes. I think capture what we can. Will the money go back to the NDF? Yes. Yeah. They have back taxes too. Yes. They also have back taxes. I know. 
in her. More than that. We're we looking for what's no, I got it. Seven hundred fifty dollars for the accusation. Yeah, most of that stuff cents on the dollar. Yeah. For any restaurant equipment type stuff, unfortunately. Do I hear a motion about it? So, I second it. And second. Any further discussion? So, has this been? We have to warn this to have let other people make them aware that this is happening. We have just one person that's ever been doing this. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's really about all you're going to get. You're not talking about a lot of money. Yeah. And for what I can tell. Conversation, it's a pretty fair offer. Yeah. We're going to pay more in storage than if we try to deal with it at all, unfortunately. What if, I'm curious, what is like, what are we, what did the MDF lose approximately? I'm kind of curious. 75,000. 70. Yeah, something like that. Uh, we're into it for probably a good 10,000 for the legal and about 6,800 or 68,000 for the legal. Yeah, okay. 78 then. A few hundred in taxes. Yep. Sure, thank you. Yeah, mm -hmm. we're unfortunate. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? So pass. Approve the write off of uncollectible ambulance account. This is something that I ask you to do every year. Yes. Uh, you can see the statistics there on the memo. Um, we're writing up 4.61% of the bill calls, um, which is an incredibly low amount yeah. of write off percentage, and it's quite a bit lower than we were before, even. I see so that. I, I think that we're doing pretty good about getting as much as we can. Um, that means you're doing a good job, Tina. <laughs> well, I'm trying. <laughs> but most of them, I think, are 99% of them are just people that don't pay or can't afford to. Right. Um, some have contacted me and others haven't. I mean, I try to work together with everybody. But... Yeah. I make a motion that we write off $13,116.29 for ambulance calls from the period of July 1, 2017 through June 30, 2018. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion is passed. Next, approved contract with Lamoille County Sheriff's for dispatch. I make a motion to approve it. Incidentally, just so that you know, this came in $4,500 under what we budgeted for for next year. Mm -hmm. I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. Any further discussion? I recuse myself as a staff member of the Sheriff's Department. Good thing. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion is passed. <clears throat> next, approve the warrants. Make a motion to approve the warrants. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion to pass. Next, TA report. Um, just, I need to, I have three people available, I think, for the rest of the week, and I have a business call hearing that I need to schedule on the Dolph Friday weekend. We got the letter today that could be seven days to schedule it. Um, I think Chris is available from a previous discussion at 4 30 Wednesday. Brian, will that work for you? Yep. I gotta, I gotta look. I had something on Wednesday. Hmm. Anyway. I had something on Wednesday. I can't remember what it is. Uh, this coming Wednesday. Yes. Yeah. We only have seven days to do it. Try to. It's not on my calendar, so. Wednesday at 4 30. 4 30. Eric, are you available then to take minutes, correct? Mm -hmm. Okay. We'll be out there soon tomorrow. 
Okay. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. 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 So yeah. 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 I imagine that's what's wrong again. Okay. That would be just John Day. I know. Ryan right. needs a new but password. Yeah. <laughs> again. Okay. okay. Yeah. 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 With our Monday morning event, it's a lot of fun. Just a quick reminder you know, next week the, the downtown uh, baby project will start with start signage and we can set up. We'll start with the signage and the existing asphalt. Um, our paving bit is out. Um, we got that out. Um, that is a mile of land off road from Fitzgerald North. That takes care of the dip, and then we did add in the uh, that part in there by the Dot Four Farm plot that you asked me to add in. Yeah. Um, we're also doing Lower Bridge Street, where they did the water line and all that because it's terrible down through there. Um, we have Pleasant Street, which is kind of carryover from last year, and the Brigham Street parking lot. Honestly, that will probably take all of the budget. Because we had, after we finished everything tonight's warrants, so there's thirty-six thousand dollars left from this fiscal year, and one hundred ninety in next year's budget. So that will probably pretty much go through everything for we'll, we'll pay. So if anybody's asking, but that doesn't leave me a little bit of play. I like to leave a little bit of play in there just in case, because I don't know what the the cost is going to be. So um, is the lower bridge street then? Does that go onto the bridge at all? Because the end of that bridge is going to be really. Great. I can see what I can do with that, but I'm reluctant to go onto a bridge because bridges are different than roads. Yep. Um, so I want to see what I can do first. I really I need to talk, talk to an engineer before I touch a bridge because there's so much thing about static weight and grinding on. So I want to, we can add that in, in the budget wise, but I really don't want to deal with that work with an engineer first. Okay. I just thought it was the, the, yeah. the talk about that, that right. starting yeah. a lot more that needs to get down into some structure. Yeah, stuff. I just want to make sure before I touch a bridge that I like, Consult with somebody. I think we're probably okay, but me thinking we're okay is not necessarily where I want to be on the bridge. So I mean, there's just so much different things with static weight, different things on the bridge, and deck and all we've done before. So um, I just want to make sure I'm doing it right. So if I'll ask them if we can add it in, then I will. If not, you know, we'll be trying to do the rest of the bridge street maybe next year to pick up the bridge in it too. Um, and then the a member of the skateboard park did come meet with me last week, and the only thing they really want left there for right now is just the jersey barriers, so they can have a place to ride them if they want to. And then they're thinking about maybe building some type of a little temporary thing until we get something done. I told them that they need to come back to the board before anything goes back in along those lines. So everything will be coming out. So they, they did you know, keep their promise to meet with me and discuss that. So we'll get that taken out soon once they get the, the road clear past break. Other than that. Any questions for Dan? Thanks, Dan. Okay. Select board concerns. None. Chris. None. Brian. None. Eric. Dan, our roadside cutting, are we going to have that? Are we looking to do that earlier this year, or are we still going to do it later in the, in the fall? We'll probably do that later. Right now, it's still off the way out there. So. Well, I don't know I'm doing it now. Yeah. Good Lord. No, but. Uh, yeah. I just, I know we've, it, we've run into last year, everybody ran into snow last fall, and I don't think we got as much done as we wanted to, but um, I just, I didn't know if we were going to look at it to be done. It, yeah, I think right now the, the thing that's going to, you know, we're going to start hauling the, the shavings here soon, that will take the whole crew. We cleaned bridges last week. Um, we did the shim work, the shoulder work on the paving. So, you know, we're still sweeping. We haven't finished sweeping yet. We're usually way beyond sweeping right now. And I think the other thing probably mentioned is that We've heard some comments about painting the crosswalks in the downtown. Um, it doesn't make a lot of sense to paint the crosswalks. And, you know, two weeks from now, they're, they're going to be ground up with the asphalt. So, you know, um, and, and the state's going to repaint all those things when they're done. So um, you, they're right now, they're really, typically speaking, you know, by midday, we're done with some of that spring work. And we're not done with it right now by 1st of June. So um, Bill reminded me that it felt like it was going to snow out there tonight. So. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, I was going to first mention uh, I've had a lot of feedback about crosswalks not being painted, and and um, I told them when the paving was going to begin. <clears throat> and uh, but it's nice to have those movable signs out there to give give people a little heads up. 
Uh, the other thing I wanted to do is, uh, Corey snuck out, but I wanted to um, congratulate her for her actions. She took on uh, that car accident in Eden on the 23rd, which was uh, pretty incredible, you know, that she did that. I know some people know the story. There's a little blurb in the paper, but um, <clears throat> was in contact with the governor's office and um, talking about doing a proclamation for her, um, maybe possibly on the 4th of July. And uh, it's a pretty special thing, what she did. So I just wanted to thank her publicly for doing that. It was way beyond just being a member of uh, Morris Sound Rescue. I know those were balancing things, too. I'm sorry? I know you're working on some things, too. Yes, sir. Yeah. That's all I had. Next, other business? Go ahead, Bill. Uh, two things. Um, Texted Micah. Uh, that truck is not currently registered, so he regrets he's not able to bring it to us. But it's available anytime any of us want a road trip down to Rutland. Take a look at it and uh, just let me know. I can get you his information. And, uh, uh, that. Uh, the only thing I just wanted to mention is that uh, uh, we rolled out Stop the Bleed classes for the first time last week. It's a one hour training uh, endorsed by the American College of Surgeons and National Association of EMTs. Um, one, one, of the, one of the cool things about being here with you guys is that Dale Porter and I have known each other professionally for, for years, and we've taught when we can. Now I get to teach with Dale all the time, and it's really kind of cool for me. Uh, Dale and I uh, rolled out uh, this stop. Uh, stop. Morristown and Muslim Copy Hospital rolled out uh, uh, Stop the Bleed programs, and uh, we did our first two last week. Uh, we, when we were planning it, we figured we'd, we'd be happy to get you know, five or ten people at each session. We did 42 the first day. Wow. That's training. Nice. Two programs. That's um, great. It's a one hour. It's a one hour training. We're doing one to two in the afternoon, repeating it at six to seven in the evening on the same day. Next one is June 12th, and that classes. Those classes are filling up too. So. Uh, uh, where, are you, where are you seeing these people come from? Is this a, a business uh, that's promoting this? Or we is this um, uh, the uh, the majority of the one that we had was uh, uh, a couple of, a few business people uh, and a couple of religious organizations mm -hmm. sending people. And we've got an inquiry from another even larger religious organization, uh, which frankly breaks my heart that I've got to teach Stop the Bleed for people to be safe in their place of worship. Uh, but that's the reality. Uh, and uh, Friday's events in Virginia just, just drive that home. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I, been teaching our people for years here and in other places that uh, it's no longer a matter of if, it's a matter of when. Okay. So the, the June 12th is our next group of classes. Uh, call me or Corey and we'll get you in. Thanks, Bill. Any other business? We have an appointment of employee or public official possible executive session. I move we enter executive session to discuss appointment or employment or evaluation of public officer or employee of the body. Will clearly place the town at a substantial disadvantage pursuant to the Title I ESA Section 313.4 of the Vermont Statutes to include Dan Lindy. Do second. I have a second? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion is passed. Thanks, Bill. Thank you. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion is passed. Make a motion to adjourn. Second. I have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion is passed.